legislation since the poor laws. It makes the poll tax look mild in comparison. This is the 21st century workhouse. But instead of housing the poor in big buildings on the edge of town, they're making people homeless, they're warehousing poor people in their own houses and making it impossible for them to live. Where universal credit has been rolled out, child hunger goes through the roof. Use of food banks goes up four, five, six times. Evictions go up. In Great Yarmouth, when they did the pilot, one housing agency reported an 85% increase of people who are subject to evictions. We were campaigning for today's march and rally on Haymarket the last three days. And one woman came up to us and said, have you been down to the court recently? If you go down to the court and look at the lists, the magistrate's courts, there's a whole line of people who are being evicted by private landlords and social housing, registered social housing landlords, because of universal credit. And these are so-called social landlords. It's supposed to be social housing, but housing associations are evicting people because they cannot pay their rent. They cannot pay their rent because of the delays, the six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks delayed that are built into universal credit. When somebody got, signs on to universal credit, they have to do it online. 38% of people who start the process never complete it because it's too complex, it's too difficult. So we can see the sorts of problems that it's creating and we've got a fantastic lineup of speakers who are going to speak more about this but I just want to say that we've had a decade now of austerity with the coalition government and now this Tory government and disabled people have been at the sharp end of austerity cuts we've been hit disproportionately by austerity cuts at every level whether that be the scrapping of, work, um, of, of uh, Disability Living Alliance uh, and the introduction of PIP, whether it be the privatised work capability assessments, whether it be the bedroom tax, the list goes on and on. Disabled people have been targeted by the Tories and by their Liberal Democrat allies for the harshest treatment. That's why the United Nations described it as a human catastrophe of what's happening to disabled people in Britain. They said this government has created grave and systematic violations of our human rights. And that's right. That's what they've done. And it's not that they're not knowing about this. When Ken Loach made I, Daniel Blake, he described it as conscious cruelty. Well, I think they've gone a stage further with universal credit. I think it's, it's conscious murder because people are dying. People are dying from heart starvation, from hunger, from suicides. The British Medical Journal published a piece of research by the University of Cambridge and U UCL that said austerity cuts since 2010 are responsible for 160,000 deaths. They projected into the future and they said that by 2022, they think that's going to be 200,000 deaths. So these aren't small questions, these are life and death questions. The political landscape in this country has been transformed by this Tory government. We know that there's been a hostile environment for the Windrush generation, for uh, ethnic minorities, people who are British citizens who are being jailed and deported. But disabled people understand this, and poor people understand this, because we've been on the same harsh treatment since 2010. So I'd like to welcome our first speaker to the platform. It's values. It's values that put people before profit, people and planet before profit. Look, there are, I can see my good colleague from the, uh, from the management committee of Compass, 
the uh, new, new co-leader of the Green Party, smiling over there when I said people and planet. And you know what? I'm going to say something. It's not, I'm not really meant to say it, but I'll say this. The Green Party has been right for a lot longer this last seven years uh, than my own party on some of these issues. I think it's fair to say, fair to say that if we want to overturn and stop, not just for one election, Conservatives and the establishment of this country, we're going to have to build broader alliances to make sure we bring down the Tories and neoliberalism, not just for five years, not just for ten years, but forever. That's what I want to see, and I'll work with yeah. everyone. Yeah. 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 Look, the government are in complete denial. Yesterday, the employment minister came on and said that uh, universal credit recipients and workers in job centres are happy with the rollout of universal credit. Yes, I know. And he said it with a straight face. I can tell you here now that if you come to my surgeries, you will hear how people are struggling and suffering, not just because of universal credit, not just because of seven years of austerity, but because of 30 or 40 years of economic policies which have undermined people's very fabric, very ability to hold life and sold together. I'm proud to say, and you'll hear a message from John MacDonald, a good friend of Deepak, my boss, a hard taskmaster, made sure I was here this Saturday to come and speak to you. He has been at the forefront of pushing our party to say that we too, come a Labour government, will scrap universal credit and replace it with something which is based on people's humanity, on keeping on people being treated as human beings. That is what we will bring in. It will be a yeah. system fit for the 21st century, a safety net for the 21st century. And let's look at what the 21st century, the possibilities of the 21st century are. We have automation, AI, increasing, increasing casualization of work. We need to have a government that will give people proper jobs, security in work, but also more importantly, for those that can't work, or for those that find themselves sick or ill or with mental health problems or who physically can't work. They need to be treated with dignity and respect as fellow human beings. We will not judge you whether you can work or whether you can't. We will judge you on your humanity. Yeah. Hey. Hey. So we know here in Norwich, the average family by 2021 will lose around about 780 pounds. That doesn't 780 pounds is a lot of money, but it takes away 68 million pounds in total. It takes away the reality that that will actually mean for so many people. The reality will be the threat of eviction, going hungry and being forced to food banks. It will mean stress. It will mean family breakup. It will mean children at school failing in education because of the stresses and strains that their family under. That is the human cost that universal credit and the system they're putting into place will take. So I'm here to tell you now, a future Labour government not only will scrap it, but it will make sure that people are paid properly at work, that people have a right to work, that we have services, an NHS, train services, public services, in public hands. You will have not just rights at work, in companies over 250 employees, you will have a real say in the future of that company. We will have workers on the board. Because let me tell you something now. We're not looking to just overturn for five or ten years the power of this Tory government and their big business, their friends in big business. We're looking for a fundamental, permanent and decisive shift in the balance of power in this country to put power in the hands of working class people. That is what the Labour Party is about. That's why I'm proud to be a part of it. That's what we'll fight the next election on. And I hope you have a fantastic rally today. Thank you very much. It's not just disabled people and poor people and working class people that have been on the receiving end, but it's been the trade unions as well. And PCS, the civil service union, was nearly the Tories trying to put them out of business. And I'm very proud to say that we've got with us today Martin Kavanagh from PCS. He's on the NEC and he's pro Vice President of the PCS DWP Committee. So, Martin. Hey. Good morning, brothers and sisters. 
comrades, and just want to take full solidarity and full support from PCS and all of our members and the National Executive Committee to Deepak and the organisers of today's event because we need to see more of this on our streets in our country and outside town halls and outside churches and outside parliamentary surgeries. There's universal credit. The word that was used by Mark to start off this rally today is pernicious. I actually don't think that does justice. What universal credit was always about, which was actually to cause death and destitution on the streets of this country. I'm proud of the role that PCS have played in highlighting the worst aspects of all benefit cuts over the past few years. But Clive, I'll put my speech away because Clive's nicked virtually every single word of it. And thanks for that comment. <laughs> but what, what I will say is this, because he brings in some very important issues that I think we need to grasp and need to deal with. The first is, it would be a huge error. A huge error on all of our parts. Clive says, if we were just to see this as some sort of Tory austerity issue. This has been a systematic dismantling of the welfare state for the past four decades. The biggest attacks, the biggest attacks in the welfare state have traditionally, regardless of the colour of the political rosette, have been on the social security system. We have seen, since 2010, 20,000 job cuts in the Department for Work and Pensions. 20,000 jobs that should have been there to provide health and security for those who need it most in our society, stripped away. And the reason that the Tories did that wasn't just because they wanted to cut the wage bill or because they wanted to see an end, as, as Mark just said, to our union and the departments. It did it because it's ideal, it's ideology, ideology is to have no welfare state, no benefit system, and to see those who struggle blamed for their own plight. That is a reality of what we face on a daily basis in this country. We have seen £34 billion pound worth of cuts since 2010, it's just in Social Security alone. And the plan is to reduce by 2022 another further £12 billion pounds in cuts. Now you tell me any business or any public service that can survive that level of slash and burn, and I'll tell you that that company and that business would be shut down and that public service would no longer be in operation. But we know, and you all know, but the services that the department provides are absolutely vital for the most vulnerable. And I'm not going to stand here and defend DWP's record in any way, shape or form. I'm proud to be here today representing PCS and PCS members. And I've got a message though for the Employment Minister, who as Clive said, stood up yesterday and said that the staff who work in job centres are happy with the rollout of universal credit and what is going on. We're so happy, comrades, that 700 of them have been in car parks this week having indicative a show of hands about potential industrial action because of the disaster that is universal credit. That's how yeah. happy our members yeah. are about universal credit. They understand, they know what is going on. And they know because disastrously and disgracefully, 40% of the staff employed in DWP qualify to claim universal credit. That's how low their salaries are. DWP workers go to food banks. DWP workers understand poverty. They're getting evicted from their homes as well, the same as every other working class person in this society. And what we need to do, and we can stand here all day and complain about what has happened, but the vision that Clive has set out is exactly the sort of vision that we want to take forward as a trade union. And we will continue to work with the Labour leadership and we'll continue to work with John McDonnell, Jeremy Corbyn, Clive and others to make sure that we have a social security system that isn't called universal credit, that isn't called PIP, that isn't called ESA or JSA, which are just titles, a social security system based on the principles that the welfare state was set up on, which is respect dignity, a social conscience, and help for those who need it at the time that they need it. That's what we need, That's what we need in our social security system. PCS are fully square behind the Labour Party leadership. I'll give this pledge. We'll push the Labour leadership as well to go even further because we want to ensure that that leadership isn't just in power for the lifetime of Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell and Clive, but we introduce into our society something that has been missing for far too long. 
and that is a social conscience, an anti-neoliberal attitude, and one that gets rid of this scrounger versus, versus worker mentality. We understand yeah. what's coming, we know what we need, socialism is what we need, comrades, and that is what we will work to deliver. Solidarity. Yay! John's been an unstinting ally of Deepak ever since we set up eight years ago. John McDonald's been at every single action, every single conference, uh, and he's given us unconditional support for our fight against austerity. But John says, I send you a message of solidarity and support. We cannot stand by and let this government inflict such immense suffering on our society. That's why universal credit has to go. Keep up your excellent campaigning. You have my 100% support. John McDonnell MP. Hey. 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 Norwich, if you can't hear me, I'm recovering from a cold, so please leave the floor, but I'll do my best to shout at you. Um, so I want to tell you about a young woman that I met a few months ago in Great Yarmouth. Uh, this young woman, a couple of years ago, she first started claiming benefits. She left school with no formal qualifications, she had a disability, and she struggled with mental health issues. She was told she needed to switch to universal credit. And at first, she told me she was quite excited at this prospect. She'd been told the process would be so much easier. It was all online, and she couldn't miss her appointments and be sanctioned. Oh. And she said she was told that you could actually end up with more money on Universal Credit. So she began to make her online application, and soon find she struggled to find her way through the complex demand of the online application. She didn't have someone she could go to for face-to-face -face support. She didn't have the evidence she needed to prove that she was disabled and that she was struggling with her mental health. It took five weeks for her to get her first payment and she fell into crippling debt to avoid getting behind on her rent and being made homeless. She visited a food bank for the first time and she fell into severe depression and anxiety. And this probably doesn't shock many of you. This is one case in thousands of cases that are so similar with universal credit. Well, one of the absolute atrocities of universal credit is the absolute neglect of domestic violence victims. Universal credit payments are made in a single household payment once a month. So this leaves people and women in abusive relationships without any financial autonomy. And from a domestic violence victim to have no financial autonomy from their partner, that is nothing more dangerous. When you take away a woman's financial independence from her abusive partner, you take away any chance they have to flee a life-threatening situation. But this government will have you believe that isn't the case. And that is an absolute lie. If you want to receive split payments, on the grounds of domestic violence, you have to attend a meeting and request it on those grounds. Shame. Not only that, but your partner will be informed and they have to agree. Oh. It shouldn't shock you then. Disgraceful. That last year in the UK, 15 split payments were made to households where domestic violence was present. That is 15 out of 1.2 million. Shame. It is an absolute disgrace. And in Great Yarmouth, where universal credit has already been rolled out, zero split payments were made. So Norwich, I cannot stress enough, we must stop and scrap the rollout of universal credit right now. Wow! This government is consistently failing women, it is consistently failing children and young people, and it is consistently failing the working classes. The Tories were outed for deliberately creating a shameful, hostile environment to migrants in this country. So now we must out them for creating that same hostile environment towards the working class, the disabled, or anyone who...
I'd like to ask the Prime Minister a question sent to me by Paul. I'd like to, but Paul is dead. The DWP considered Paul to have such severe mental health problems, there was no prospect of Paul being able to work. Yet Paul was sanctioned, effectively, for not being able to open his own post. A pile of brown envelopes lay next to Paul's body and note. Under this government, the disabled are labelled the low-hanging fruit, easy pickings. Cut, cut, cut. This government knew Paul couldn't cope, yet people like Paul are dying every day, despite report after report after report. And what are the right honourable members opposite doing about this cruel and criminal sport? Nothing! Why not? One can only conclude that the deaths will continue because death is what this government wants! I'm here today because I am on benefit. I am that benefit scrounger. I am HIV positive. I deal with depression and anxiety. I just had my ESA, my work capability assessment. God knows how, but I sailed through it and I've got that. So I now feel that bit is okay. I get disability living allowance. That's a small top up benefit for being disabled to help me with the extra expense of being disabled. That stops on the 16th of this month, October. I've had a PIP assessment two days after the work capability assessment that I saw through, and the PIP assessment, I got zero points. It just can't be possible for the same person to have a test, admittedly for other things, but for it to have absolutely zero points. So I have written to my MP, a Tory, We'll see what happens there. I wish me luck. But that's the reason why I thought it's really important to come out here today. And I really appreciate all of these people coming out today. Because the next thing that's going to hit me after I've sorted out my PIP or not is going to be universal credit. So I'm just trying to run one slice ahead of the system. God bless you. Good luck to you all. Peace and solidarity. Thank you.